this one we will need a formal conjugate. I, I really don't have two different ways to do this one as much as you want me to. So on this one, let's take um, the, the conjugate of the denominator. So it's 1 and 2i, but it was minus before, so now it's going to be plus. And if we do it to the denominator, we need to do it to the numerator as well. So it's all being multiplied. Um, I, I recommend putting parentheses around these once you start multiplying because um, sometimes it can cause confusion without them. Or, or, or sometimes students will just distribute the first value and not the second value of the first one there. All right, so I'm going to work. I want to just work in the denominator for now, so I hope that's okay. But in the past, I usually just work in the numerator first. It doesn't matter. You can work in the numerator first, denominator second. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to work in the denominators because that's where the conjugate is being applied, right? So I'd have uh, 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times 2i, which is positive 2i. And, and just like we would expect with a conjugate right here, you're going to see that the i's are going to go away because now when I distribute this negative 2i to the 1, I get negative 2i. And you can see there that those two terms are going to zero out. Uh, but then I've got negative 2i times 2i, which would be negative 4i squared. I didn't necessarily show as much work as I did on the last problem. I hope that's okay. Um, but now you can see this. I'm, I'm just going to zero these out. 2i minus 2i, that zeroes out, just like we would expect with a difference of squares. Because now what I have is I've got the 1. I'm going to work with this i squared here because that would have been, that becomes a negative 1, right? So I end up with 1 minus 4 times negative 1 which is um, 1 minus, well, it ended up being 1, but a negative 4 times negative 1 would be positive 4. And that gives me a new denominator of 5. Now we got to do the, the numerator. I guess I'll do this one in green. And so I, I start with negative 4 times 1, which would be negative 4. And I've got negative 4 times 2i's, would be, which would be negative 8i's. And then I've got negative 6 times 1, which would be neg negative 6i times 1, which would be negative 6i's. And then I've got negative 6 times 2i's, which would be negative 12, but now i squared. Uh, now the i squared there, just like we saw before, would be negative 1. So I'm going to do two parts in one. And I'm going to take my i's and combine those two. So negative 8 minus 6 would be negative 14i's. And then everything else just stays for now. Okay, so this is what I got. Let's see if we can simplify that. Um, I'm going to have to keep my negative 14 i's. Um, oh, well, I should do that work as well. So negative 14 i. Uh, but what have we got? Negative 12 times negative 1 would be positive 12. And then I've got the negative 4 there in the front that I can combine with that. So negative 4 and positive 12 would give me positive 8. And then I've got my negative 14 i's. Now, from what I remember, this format's OK. Right? Like if you're like, hey, I just want to stop right there, you can. If you wanted to, you can write them as separate fractions, though, like we've done in the past problems. So you'd have two fractions in fifths, right, because it doesn't change the denominator. Uh, but you'd have 8. And again, my negative is going to show as a minus sign, and then it would be 14 i's. So either one of these should work. By the way, I don't usually do, I don't usually show it. Like, if I know this can't be simplified, which I know it can't, then I don't usually worry about changing them into separate fractions. Um, but I believe the assignment will accept this, right? Because this is it's just a little bit of extra work, and there's small mistakes that can happen between here and here, which... I probably will do eventually. 